Scuba diving as we know it has been around since the 50s and people have been thinking up ideas and making dreams come true ever since then. Others have been making some pretty wacky stuff that's, you know, a little bit crap to be honest, and some things are actually naively dangerous. Today, boys and girls, we're going to be looking at some of the worst dive gear in the world that I know of, old and new, but of course, this is a social experience, so feel free to add your own ideas on what the worst dive kit is around in the comments. Cast your mind way back to a time when submersible pressure gauges or SPGs didn't exist or, you know, weren't that great really. However would you know how much gas was left in your cylinder? Uh, you didn't really. So they invented J-valves. A J-valve looked quite similar to the normal valve that you have in your cylinder, but on one side of it was a little lever. When it was set to the upwards position, this valve would hold around a reserve of something like 35 bar or 500 psi. So on a dive, when your dive tank ran dry and you couldn't breathe from it anymore, you knew that you had about 35 bar left. Yank that little lever down behind you to release your reserve air. Or, you know, panic when you realise that you didn't reset the valve at the beginning of the dive. Scuba Tutor says this, J valves are no longer considered to be an acceptable method of monitoring your air supply because reliable cylinder pressure gauges have become standard equipment. Back when we first went scuba diving was a dangerous time, based on all the comics and protective gear that scuba divers needed back then. Everything in the ocean was out to kill you, so you needed a foot-long knife to defend yourself. But what happens when your huge dive knife wasn't enough? Enter the shark dart. Shark dart was basically a hollow ice pick with a gas canister in the handle. When, not if, a shark came up to attack you, you deployed shark dart and then stabbed the poor shark. Not just stabbing it with a 9 inch long ice pick, but delivering a dose of compressed gas underneath its skin to send it on its way. Yeah, that's so lovely! Lovely. This one's a little bit modern, and I actually cringe every time I see snuba videos. One of the better aspects is that you're pretty much tethered, so you physically can't go too deep, but that benefit is far outweighed by its potential dangers. Snuba is a quick and easy way to get people under the water, but they're usually in large groups, and they have hoses crossing all over the place, and these people aren't highly trained neither, so if their mouthpiece gets pulled out, their first reaction is probably just going to bolt to the surface, isn't it? Holding their breath whilst they do so. Because of the large groups too, the leader, who's usually on a scuba unit, I'll note, is a long way from the furthest member. So if something goes wrong with the pump on the surface, that really long hose feeding their air, or any of the potential failure points in the system, then someone's going to have a really bad day. The online community can be awful sometimes. Not just the internet trolls, but people who think that it's a good idea to fill up a makeshift coke bottle with a bicycle pump and then use it as a small scuba cylinder to swim deeper than they can hold their breath. Similar to spare air aimed at untrained snorkelers, encouraging others to make or use compressed air to swim down deep and breathe in can get someone seriously hurt. Think back to your very first dive course. What was the first thing that you were ever taught? I'll wager it was something along the lines of don't hold your breath and then ascend. Divers very quickly got bored of dive tables. I mean, Paddy barely teaches them anymore, favouring teaching people to use their dive computer correctly more now. But dive computers have come a long way from their humble beginnings. Back in the 50s, the D computer Mark I was an analogue gauge that measures your depth and ascent rates, trying desperately to keep you safe. When you get into the digital age, you had things like the Orca Edge that had an LCD display. But these things were nothing compared to what we have now. Again, check out Alex Pierce's video if you want to see some real vintage dive computers. Oh my 
god, rattles and shakers. They're great for babies and getting people's attention in the water and ruining a peaceful dive because that noise really does travel quite far underwater. Oh, is someone trying to get my attention? No, someone just turned around and their rattle shifted in their pocket a little bit like a small metal avalanche. One of the worst things ever near you on a dive is a persistent person, likely named something like Karen, trying to get someone's attention with a rattle. Shake, 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 shake. Oh, just kill me now. Oh, yeah, just the worst thing. You're kind of like, ting, ting, ting. Ting, 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 ting. Oh, shut up. I don't think anybody has made a particularly good octo holder yet. They're a bit of a contradiction in terms because it's a clip that's supposed to hold something securely, but it also needs to be quick release at the same time. They're also clipped right under your arm where you can't quite reach or see on a BCD. So the training agencies really need to see sense finally and move to a necklace training method and primary donate. If you particularly like your Octo clip, then go ahead and defend it in the comments, but I'll be sticking with my necklace, thank you. So what's the worst thing you've ever dived with? And I want names, people. Name and shame them. Thanks for watching and safe diving. We are an online dive store serving the UK and the world for all your diving equipment needs. So why not visit us at simplyscuba.com or click the box on your screen.